What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're finally going to be doing a deep dive into all of the types of muzzle attachments that help with recoil in Modern Warfare 2. Now I did this same thing with the underbarrel attachments in the game, just focusing on recoil, and with this I am using hard-coded data coming from sim.gg, I will leave a link to the website down below, but in this video I tried to make it a whole lot easier to understand, and in addition to that I included a lot of the hand testing that I've done as well, so you can see the effects of these different muzzles. Now before we get into all the data and testing everything, I do have some very important disclaimers that have to be said at the beginning of the video. First up, I'm only focusing on the recoil benefits of these muzzles, and therefore I'm not looking at any sort of additional effects outside of recoil, not even really going to be touching on suppressors or anything at this point, since none of them really help significantly with recoil at least. Also, the coded data only shows us view kick and gun kick, and while these are two very important parts of recoil, they're not everything. And as a result, there are some other unstated stats that could be impacting our recoil as well. So this doesn't necessarily paint the entire picture of everything. Also, for most of what I'm going to be showing here, this is designed to be used as a general rule. There are exceptions. I did show ranges of how much various attachments tend to help. But some guns with certain attachments will fall outside of that range. They have different values attached to them for some reason. So there absolutely will be the odd exception here or there, but this is going to be a very good general rule of thumb to help you make better decisions with your attachments. And finally, there is no one-size-fits-all best muzzle attachment for recoil because every gun in this game will have different recoil properties and therefore they require help in different areas. So there really isn't one best muzzle attachment for all guns in the game. And with that out of the way, let's dive right into the breakdown here. And we're going to start this off with flash hiders. Now with the flash hiders in this game, they don't have quite as much of an impact on recoil as many of the other styles of muzzles. That's why I group them differently here. And with these, there are three different tiers of recoil impacting flash hiders. We've got what I like to call tier one. These are the ones that harm our aim down sight speed by 30 milliseconds, but they give us the greatest improvement to view kick and gun kick out of the flash hiders. Then we have tier two, which harms our aim down sight time by 27 milliseconds, but it doesn't benefit recoil quite as much as tier one. And then finally there's tier three, which hurts our aim down sight time by 23 milliseconds and only gives us about half of the recoil benefits as the tier two attachments. So in all, if you are going to be using a flash hider, I would just ignore the tier 3 ones simply because it's not worth saving 4 milliseconds to aim down sight time to get only half the benefits to our recoil. So I would primarily stick to either tier 1 or tier 2 muzzles here. And let's have a look at the recoil comparison using the M4, and I put these in reverse order so you can see how they improve here as you get more and more recoil control with this. And this looks about exactly how you'd expect. It gets a little bit better with each tier up that you go, all the way up to tier 1. And that wraps it up for the flash hiders. Those are pretty basic. And overall, these aren't going to be helping with recoil nearly as much as the rest of the muzzles we'll be covering. However, the downside to the rest of the muzzles we're covering today is all of them will hurt our aim down sight time by 40 milliseconds rather than 23 to 30 milliseconds with the flash hiders. And diving right into the first set of these muzzles I wanted to cover, these are the horizontal or vertical only muzzles, where if you look at the pros and cons while scrolling through your attachments, you'll see these ones will say that they only help with horizontal or they only help with vertical recoil. And with these, it turns out they don't only help with horizontal or vertical. However, with the horizontal muzzles, you'll see about a 25 to 30% improvement to horizontal view kick and gun kick, whereas you're only seeing about a 7 to 8% improvement to vertical. But it still does help with vertical a bit. On the flip side, we have our vertical only muzzles, and these ones are basically just the inverse of that. They're going to help with our vertical recoil by about 27 to 30%, whereas they still help our horizontal recoil, but only by about 10% or so. So these are the ones that are on sort of the extreme ends of the scale where you want to get the best possible horizontal recoil or best possible vertical recoil. Now let's start talking about the ones in the middle and we're going to start this off with the horizontal and vertical recoil control muzzles in that order where the horizontal recoil control is stated first and then the vertical recoil control in the pros is stated second. And with these ones, you're going to get more of an improvement to horizontal recoil than vertical recoil, but there is a bit of a balance here to be found and different tiers within that balance. 
And just to be clear with these tiers, tier one doesn't necessarily mean it's always better than tier three. I just needed a way to create some separation between these so you can see the differences in them. And as we can see here, for our tier one horizontal and vertical muzzles, they're gonna be helping primarily with horizontal recoil control, but you're gonna see some help to vertical there as well. The ranges are roughly between like 22 and 26% improvement to our horizontal recoil and about an eight to 12% improvement to vertical, depending on the gun and which one of these muzzles you're using. Then with tier two, we're seeing a bit more of a balance where we're getting slightly less horizontal recoil control improvement, but also slightly more vertical recoil control improvement. And then finally with tier three, that trend continues. And now we've got a much closer balance where we're still getting slightly more horizontal recoil control, but not by a large margin by any means. These are pretty well balanced between horizontal and vertical recoil. And when we have a look at the recoil plots here, again, this is not really all that surprising. If we look at the tier three horizontal plus vertical, you can see this is helping with vertical recoil control more than the others because we've got a better balance between horizontal and vertical, but we're also seeing not as much horizontal improvement with this compared to the other tiers. And you can just see that trend continue as you continue moving to the right. We're getting slightly less vertical recoil control, but more horizontal recoil control until you get over to that Komodo Heavy on the M4, which practically eliminates horizontal recoil, but it's not helping as much with vertical as the tier three here. And it's great to see that this just matches up essentially perfectly with the coded data that we can see there. And finally, this brings us into our vertical plus horizontal muzzles, where the vertical pro is above the horizontal pro in the menus. And with this, our selection isn't nearly as good as our horizontal plus vertical. And therefore, we actually only have two different tiers of this as far as I was able to find. With tier one, this includes the Sack and Tread 40 and the Bruin Pendulum. And with this, we're seeing a great improvement to vertical recoil control and a much lesser improvement to horizontal recoil control. And then we have our tier two muzzles for this particular category. And with this, we're seeing a much closer balance between the two. So it's the exact same trend that we were just looking at, but just flipped on its head and prioritizing vertical. And now let's have a look at the recoil plots here again with the M4 using these attachments. And once again, we can see a clear trend here where as you move to the right, we're getting better and better vertical recoil control, but you can see there's more and more horizontal recoil and more and more deviation as well horizontally from the recoil path. And that pretty much wraps it up for the breakdown of all of these different muzzle attachments. I realize this may seem a little confusing. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of different names for muzzles that do the exact same things, like the ones that fall into the same tiers. And it just depends on which gun you're using or which weapon class that you're using, for instance. So to help you guys keep this organized and help you make better decisions at a glance, I decided to make a graphic with a scale from horizontal to vertical recoil control here, trying to show off most, if not all, of these style of muzzles that are going to harm our aim down sight speed by 40 milliseconds. If there's any part of the video to screenshot, this would be it. This is something that would be great to have on hand for creating your class setups. And that way, when you look at the type of recoil that a particular gun has, you could just go shoot at a wall for yourself and see where it needs the most help. With some guns, you might need a ton of horizontal recoil control to help it out. Other guns might need a lot more vertical recoil control to help it out. And then for other guns, you might wanna select something that's a little bit more balanced, somewhere in the middle of this scale, that will just give you a nice balance between both of those types of recoil. So this right here just provides a great summary and a great quick reference point as you're creating your class setups. And I'd highly recommend taking a screenshot of this, saving it somewhere, having it ready to go. So when you make your class setups, you can make a really quick decision as to which muzzle attachment is gonna be best for that particular gun. And with that, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. I managed to make it quite quick, even though a lot of time and effort went into creating this on the back end. So I hope you guys can really appreciate that. A big thing to point out here though, that you may have noticed if you've seen the underbarrel video as well, it turns out the muzzles in this game are actually gonna help the most out of any of the attachment categories when it comes to recoil. These are way more impactful to recoil compared to underbarrels. And as a result, if you're conflicted between putting either a muzzle or an underbarrel on and you're trying to get the best recoil possible, you're gonna wanna go in the direction of a muzzle attachment rather than an underbarrel. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. How do you feel about how they've decided to organize the muzzle attachments in this game and how they help with vertical versus horizontal recoil? Do you like the fact that they've sort of fragmented everything to the point where you can create this nice scale and it essentially allows you to choose how much horizontal versus how much vertical recoil control you want on a gun? Or would you prefer if they kept things a whole lot more simple than this? 
Just let me know all of those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.